Welcome, I'm Lizzie Brooks and this is Lizzie Brooks Yoga and Fitness. Today's video is really important. It's why can't I do pigeon pose and how to make it easier. So first and foremost, I wanna put out there that if you never do the kind of classic pigeon pose where your leg is forward, one leg is back, you're facing the mat, let's not worry about it. There are plenty of other options. If you have never been given the option on your back, know that that is an option or even at the wall. So let me just quickly, I have a kind of a priceless tip that I think isn't, that isn't taught very often that I wanna show you. But first I wanna show you that this option and I'll show you on my back is available crossing one ankle to the top of the knee, engaging at the ankle, arm through the middle, wrap around behind or in front of the knee and bringing it in. This is an option. So is keeping the foot on the floor. If that gives you a stretch in your hip, great. So is doing this at the wall like so, okay? So lots of ways to get into the hip similarly to pigeon pose while it not being classic pigeon pose because who cares, right? So, but if you are playing with pigeon pose, it feels like it can be beneficial, but you're not quite getting the benefit. Maybe your knee is bothering you, your ankle is bothering you. You've probably been told to use props. So yes, props can be great. And I'm gonna show you the use of props, but also the trick that I have with the props. So it's actually giving you another level up. So you might be the type of person who comes into a pigeon pose and you're here and your ankle is very close into your hip and you're not feeling quite enough stretch. Now, if you're feeling a great stretch in the hip, great, maybe that's your pose. Maybe you're gonna use some height, stay up there. Maybe you're going to use a bolster or a blanket. I love to see this done horizontally across the mat like this or across the hips so both sides of the hips get some height rather than just one side. Or of course, you could just move it to one side, whatever works for you. But I want to pay particular attention to what's happening in your knee. Yes, the height brings you up, so there's less pressure on the hinge joint of the knee, and that's great. But if it brings you up and decreases the pressure of the knee, but you're still not getting a stretch, you're probably not getting all of the benefit that you could get. I love that it brings safety to the knee joint, but maybe you're not quite in the opening that you quite need. So some teachers will say, yes, to protect your knee, just engage your ankle. Make your ankle an L shape, engage that. The reason they're saying that is because that engages the shin muscle, which then helps engage the musculature around the knee and helps the patella from kind of moving around a lot. So yes, engaging the ankle can add some stability to the knee. Do I think it's the only thing to add? No, I kind of think it's a secondary thing to add once you've incorporated the other things. Because even if you were here, what do we hear? We hear the teacher say, let's get that shin more parallel to the front of the mat. Mm, that's a tricky instruction because what most people do is they take their hinge joint, not their ball and socket hip joint, their hinge joint of their knee, and they lift up their ankle and they move it forward and they can torque the knee and actually really harm the knee. Now, I would say do not ever do that movement, ever, ever, ever. And say you are on this height and you have this stuff going for you and you have your ankle flexed, just make sure, I forgot to mention this earlier, just make sure your ankle is not up on the same height as your hips, okay? So do make sure if you do this, because again, I'm talking about torque and the knee joint, that can add that torque or that play in the knee joint that you don't want. So make sure that if you are there, your ankle is under the blanket or forward of it if that's where your hip opened to, okay? So now, to show you the trick that will allow the movement to come from the opening in the hip and keep the knee safe, I'm gonna show you right now. It might be easier to do it not on a sticky mat, on, more on a slidey surface. So you can try it on a slidey surface as well. So we start out in the pigeon pose. Our shin is kind of back, our ankle is back. And we're saying, mm, we're not quite getting that opening in that hip that we're looking for. So what I recommend, and you can watch this and then do it along with me, is to lift up high in the pelvis, 
pretty darn high. Then turn, it's not just a twist, it's an actual turn. You're gonna turn towards that front knee and even more to the side of it. Lift the pelvis up and let everything rotate with you. Take the knee with you, rotate the chest with you, then keep your pelvis that high as you walk the torso and the arms back forward. You're way high up here. Then, and that's why it helps to be in a slidey surface, you're gonna move the back leg back. So, it, so here you're gonna kinda heat knee toe back, but you can slide back if you're on a slidey surface. And then, look what happened. Oh, my ankle is much further away from my hip now. The movement came from the ball and socket joint of my hip and my knee feels safe. Now, once I get there, if I go, ooh, that's too much of an opening, or I still feel a little twinge in the knee, not quite there, that's when you can go ahead and add height of your props to this particular pose, okay? So I'm gonna show you one more time on the other side without the sticky mat so you can see the difference of when you can slide a little bit more easily. Whoop. <laughs> it makes a lot of noise with to have feet on here. Okay, so here's how we start. We lift high up. Turn, you're in the direction of that front knee, but actually turn even more. Let everything slide with you, okay? Keep it there turn your torso and your hands back, and then you can slide that back leg back. The opening came into the hip, the knee feels okay, then you might engage the ankle or add on some more height underneath you if that feels like it's necessary. So I hope that that helped. And there are little tricks like this for so many of the postures. So please never ever listen to an instructor over your own intuition. Never go, well, they told me to do that and it caused pain in my body, but they know what they're doing, so I should just do it anyway. No, you are the one that has to advocate for yourself. You're the one dealing with that pain. They're not, they can walk away from it, you cannot. So speak up, ask questions, um, recognize that teachers are human and they might not have all the answers for you, trust your intuition, and maybe choose a different posture if that one's not working and you're not getting the correct information in the moment. I hope you found this enjoyable again, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you got any um, value to this video, please consider hitting like and coming back to join me for I don't know, maybe a full practice. Thanks so much, namaste.